All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Desmos to find a p-value for a one sample z-test uh, for a population mean. All right, I just grabbed, you know, a pretty generic textbook style problem. Um, not a ton of detail to it because I wanted to focus on um, essentially what you're looking for in the problem. All right, let's say we had a survey given out a while ago. Um, the survey, one of the questions said, how much time do you spend uh, sending and answering emails? All right, so here's the information that I really need to take away from it. All right, the sample size is 35. It says the sample of 35 participants. So n in the Z statistic formula is going to be 35. So the sample yielded a sample mean of 6.03 hours per week. So the sample mean, that's going to be the X bar in our formula. Researchers were comfortable assuming that the population standard deviation of nine hours per week with the normal population data. Okay, so if they're going to assume a value for the population standard deviation, that's going to be sigma in our Z statistic formula. And then that last sentence, that's really giving us the motivation. This is our question of interest. Does the data provide evidence that the true time spent answering emails for members of this population is greater than five hours? So our alternative looks like a greater than alternative and the null value is going to be five hours. All right, so that's the mu naught in the formula for a Z statistic. Um, so knowing also that the alternative has this greater than direction, I know my p-value is going to be in that greater than or right tail. Okay, so again, taking note that the sample size is 35, the sample mean is 6.03, the sigma in our problem population standard deviation is 9, and our null value is 5. Okay, so with all of that, we're going to go ahead and calculate the Z statistic first. So in Desmos, I'll type out Z equals, and then in the numerator, I want to capture the sample mean minus the null value for the population mean. So I'm going to open up parentheses and type 6.03 and then minus five, and I'm gonna close those parentheses so I've got everything in the numerator as I need it. Okay, so now I'll take that quantity and divide it by the uh, standard error, which requires us to type in the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So since that denominator has some stuff to it, I'm going to open up another set of parentheses and type uh, nine, which was our population standard deviation, and that is divided by the square root of our sample size, which was 35. Okay, so now that I have everything typed out as I see it, I just like to finish things up to make sure that they look the way I want them to, so I'm going to hit the right arrow on my keyboard. Notice that the cursor kind of jumped up to the right of that denominator. And so then just to close things out, make sure that I am um, finishing up my work, I've got um, my Z statistic looking proper. So our Z statistic is 0.677. It's okay to round to about two or three decimal places on this one. All right, so now that I have my Z statistic, I need to go get the P value. So I'm going to open up another um, little option here. And in order to look at a normal curve, I would need to type in the command normal dist. OK, so now this is a command that's going to essentially uh, give me a normal distribution. But I need to tell it what normal distribution I'm looking for. So on my keyboard, I just typed an open parenthesis. And it tells me here, it gives me a little note saying that it needs a mean and a standard deviation. So right now it's giving me a standard normal curve, right? A mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So I'll go ahead and just type that to be thorough. Mean of zero, standard deviation of one, and we'll close those parentheses. So I have now this normal distribution. Now on your graph, if you're just starting out and you see just a little tiny bump on your x-axis, go ahead and hit that zoom button that's down here in the corner. It's like a little magnifying glass with the plus sign. That's going to allow 
Desmos to zoom into this area and you can really see what's going on. Now a p-value is the probability of observing what I did. I can interpret that as the z statistic or something more extreme, right? That means more extreme in the direction of the alternative, which is that greater than or right tail. Uh, and then uh, of course, for the p-value, we have to assume that the null is true, right? That's why we use five in the formula of this z statistic. So what I want is to find cumulative probability. So I'm going to hit this little check mark, and now I'm able to provide uh, decimals with the minimum and a maximum. So in other words, what range am I looking for? Well, if the maximum is infinity way out here in this tail, then I can go ahead and hit a minimum of that Z statistic, 0.677. All right, so here is what I observed as a Z statistic, 0.677. What I have is the right tail of this normal curve and it just goes out to infinity. If you ever lose this infinity, uh, for whatever reason, you can always just type a really, really large number, right? Let's say I type something like 100. Notice that the p-value did, or that's not 100, 100,000. Notice that the p-value doesn't change much. All right, so this p-value is rather large, uh, 0.25, uh, and since that is a large p-value, our conclusion would be that we failed to reject the null hypothesis. There is not enough evidence to support our alternative. 